You were all set. Let's go. Um, let, first of all, let me say good evening, everybody. My name is Hester Wheeler. I serve as your Secretary of State for Michigan. I'm on the team with Jocelyn Benson, who is our uh, very, very dynamic, high energy Secretary of State. We take responsibility to serve as your Chief Elections Officer. We take that very, very seriously. And I have to tell you, there is so much good energy and Battle Creek, we love you guys. We have been paying attention to all of your energy and all of your efforts. And we are deeply appreciative that you guys would host us in a conversation this evening about voting. Uh, as you know, the, the rules have changed. Uh, the laws have changed. We've got some new voting rights. And we'd love to, to just spend some time with you this evening talking about those new voting rights and answering any questions or concerns you might have. I think you know how we got to this moment was via an initiative we started called VMI or Vote Our Voting Matters Initiative. We looked around the state, we determined uh, which were the 100 lowest performing precincts. And it's not unique to the, the Battle Creek. Uh, I know all things good happen in Battle Creek, uh, but this just happens to be one of those anomalies. Uh, 40 of those precincts for your information are in Detroit, about 20 of them are in Flint. Uh, there are low performing precincts in Ann Arbor, Ypsilanti, Sturgis, Benton Harbor, Muskegon, Muskegon Heights, Flint, Bay City, Saginaw. So uh, you're not alone, but we appreciate uh, you guys just participating with us in this conversation because we really wanted to listen and learn and share with you some of the best practices uh, we have. And before I go any further, I'd like to say hello again to Victoria Hauser, a Battle Creek City Clerk. We are deeply appreciative that you could join us this evening. You probably, in the spirit of James Brown, you're probably the busiest woman in show business right now. So uh, you're the queen of this experience. Uh, how are you? Tell us what's going on. Good, thank you. I don't know if I'm the queen of the experience or the busiest. I think maybe in Calhoun County, um, not throughout the state. Um, we're really busy. We are very excited to be able to do this. Um, we're very, very grateful that Commissioner Gray was able to organize all of this for us and bring it to our city. It's very important for all of us. Thank you, thank you. And uh, before we hear from uh, Commissioner Gray, just give us uh, the landscape there in Battle Creek. How many uh, registered voters, how many absentee uh, ballot requests uh, do you anticipate and uh, what's going on? What's it, what does that energy look like? Well, we have about 52,000 residents. Um, of that, about 38,000 registered voters. Awesome. And as of today, we sent out in the mail 9,292 AV ballots. Um, our mayor has predicted that we will get at least 12,000 requests. Yes. Um, I think we might get a little more than that because okay. we still have at least a month to go. So I, maybe not 15,000, but probably at least 12,000, if not more. That's awesome. That's a good number. Yep. Ben Ward, great. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, why are we doing this? What's what's going on? Oh, well, because we want everyone in Battle Creek. Hello, Battle Creek. And yeah. hello to uh, the, the co-host of this uh, amazing event, uh, Assistant Secretary of State Wheeler, and uh, someone I thoroughly enjoy working with at the city, the city clerk, Victoria Hauser. Uh, thank you for being a part of this. We want everybody to vote. Whether you're voting absentee or you're voting in person, uh, we are ready for you. And I thank uh, Victoria Hauser, the city clerk's office, and, and the team there for uh, really creating a safe environment and opportunity for us to cast our vote. Uh, that is our voice. And so yes. I am here uh, representing, as you can tell, uh, my sorority is one of the partners in this event today, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. I am the current president and I have our social action chair on the line. I see her here, A. Lynn Bull, uh, Dukes. Dukes. <laughs> Bulls Dukes. Yes. Uh, she got that three thing, three name thing going on, just like I do. Awesome. <laughs> and, um, and I also see uh, other sorority sisters on the call representing, I, uh, as you know, uh, as a city commissioner, you wear many hats and I'm representing many folks today. All I have to say is vote. And yeah. today you're going to learn uh, some information about how you can get educated on how 
to cast your vote and where you can go to cast your vote. And I am just happy to be a part. So thank you for having me. And thank you for helping make this happen. I, I have to tell you, full disclosure up front, I eat, live, love Deltas. <laughs> My wife is a big shot in the Deltas. And I know uh, how to make things happen. If you connect to those Greek organizations, and I think yes. women, you women just run things. You you just get it done. <laughs> and and uh, Yes, just like Irina. See, she, we, we've been working together on this, so we, we get things yeah. done. You're right. And, Thank you for that shout out. And speaking of uh, Irina, uh, I, I did want to introduce two of my colleagues who are on this call. That That is uh, Irina Kofis and Bilal Hamoud. Uh, 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 Irina does a good job with all of our public engagement in, initiatives. And I'll, uh, fair warning up front, um, she takes copious notes, so whatever you say, she's probably <laughs> going to write it down. If you make a specific request, Irina is, is so very good at capturing your request and making sure that we are particularly responsive. Uh, Mr. Smooth is ba Bilal Hamoud. You will uh, hear that when you hear him speak. Uh, his next life, he's going to be a disc jockey or uh, he's a candidate for voiceover acting right now. He is very good, but he's our language assistance uh, specialist. And this guy has taken every uh, document that we have and he has translated it into every language. Every If you live in Michigan, we don't care what language you speak, uh, we've got something for you. And we're going to hear from uh, Bilal at some point. But let me share a couple of things just uh, I asked you, Victoria Hauser, to just talk about uh, Battle Creek's uh, political landscape. Uh, let me share with you uh, some of the things that we're looking at across the state of Michigan. First of all, COVID-19 is huge. Uh, and this, in a lot of ways, is a moment of convergence because this affliction comes about at the exact same time uh, that Michigan is implementing our new voting rights. Uh, so we had 2.5 million people vote in the August 4 primary. Interestingly, 1.6 million voted via by mail or they took advantage of our no excuse absentee uh, 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 balloting process. And honestly, we saw, and, and in many of our conversations with clerks from around the state, uh, they applauded this particular voting right because it really took a lot of the stress off of the polls. People took advantage of the opportunity to vote by mail vote from the comfort of their own home. They sat at their dining room tables, they studied the issues, they studied the candidates, and they were able to participate like that. And a lot of communities, if you're like uh, many of the other communities, very often uh, the election worker, uh, Sturgis, for example, they say the average age of their election worker is about 75. In Detroit, the average age is 65. If you're black or brown, and you're 65 or 75, it's a good chance you have a compromised immune system. So in a lot of those communities, we're encouraging young people. We need 20s and 30-somethings yes, to get in the game. Uh, uh, how, how does that look for you, uh, uh, Clerk Hauser? Are, are young people getting involved? And what's your average age, for example? I would say our average age is probably about 65. But yeah. we are trying to encourage students, even high school students, to get yes. involved. Um, we the younger generation is just so much quicker on the e-poll book than the rest of us. They pick yes. it up quicker and they operate it much quicker. So we yes. try to encourage that. Um, we're also looking for a lot of additional inspectors only because of our elder inspectors who no longer wish to work a full 16 to 20 hour day. That's they prefer right. maybe a half shift. So we continue to look for more people to help us fill in. And, and, and if you're like me, I think you agree that uh, I believe the very best way to predict the future is to create it. So I pay particular attention to young people and I encourage and applaud. I don't care what they do. I tell them how great they are and, and how much we appreciate their energy and their idealism. Uh, but we also know there's a place called Convergence where their energy and idealism uh, can, can really complement you know, some of our, our uh, uh, discernment and, and, and seniority. So we're encouraging young people at every turn to get in the game. So in addition to no excuse absentee voting, uh, same day voter registration is really a big deal. Over 18,000 people have taken advantage of that new voting right. Same day voter registration. There are no more deadlines. 
There are no more uh, affidavits. There are no more 30 days in advance. All of that has gone away because of no excuse absentee voting uh, and same day voter registration. I literally uh, got into a big debate with a mom whose daughter was off to college uh, this year. And she says, I've got to get that affidavit. I've got to get my daughter back to the polls to vote in person for the very first time. But that's no longer the case. If you have a driver's license or a state identification, you can actually uh, register and vote and actually have your ballot mailed to your dormitory or your residence, wherever you are. So I think that's especially significant. You know, we've hosted three elections here in Michigan already. March 10, we had the presidential primary and some 52 communities across the state of Michigan. We had a either school board or school bond millage uh, proposals in, in, in different communities. Then again, on August 4, we had our uh, regular primaries. 18,000 plus people took advantage of same day voter registration. And that's a very, very important number because guess what? Over 50% of those folk who took advantage of same day voter registration, they were all under the age of 30. Those are young people. Mm -hmm. And guess what? Hundreds of those young people under the age of 30 they were ages 18 and 19. So what that says to us is that young people will participate. They want to participate. But those of us who might be a little more seasoned, we've got to keep our hand on them. Don't let them go. Just keep pushing them, keep reminding them. And if, if, if these young people are like I was when I was in that generation, uh, there's a natural, law, a natural law out there called uh, the law of scarcity. Most of you already know what I mean. Um, and that's when having so little means so much. Typically when you're out of time, that's when you do your best work. I remember my college days, I, I, I was the smartest the night before because I would cram, cram, cram. I would get that news, I would get my 10 page paper complete the night before, even though I had 10 weeks to work on it. But my point is young people, uh, when, when they're absolutely out of time, they will go to the poll, they will participate. And what we know about young people, uh, just based on our research, is if we get them to the poll at 18 or 19 or 20, if, if that's their first opportunity to vote, what we know is people who vote in the first or second opportunity they have, they become voters for life. If they miss that first or second opportunity, then it's people like us who spend the rest of our life chasing that voter. So I am saying, keep your hand on young people. We've got some research that shows uh, in these low performing precincts and uh, particularly in Southeast Michigan, there's some 275,000 young people who are already registered to vote who average maybe 10, 12 to 15% consistency relevant to participation. So if there is a secret weapon, it is definitely in that age demographic, 18 to 35. So just be reminded, uh, every precinct was open uh, same day voter registration and automatic voter reg it, every precinct was open, uh, even in view of COVID-19, largely because, uh, there, there was ample PPE equipment. How did you guys do, uh, clerk housing? Did you have ample PPP equipment? Was social distancing honored? Were people comfortable? Were you able to keep all your polls open? Did you have an ample supply of poll workers? Yes, we had um, all our polls open. We had a lot of poll workers. We had a lot of people for the AV counting board. Um, we had sufficient PPE. Um, the Excellent. Secretary of State, the Bureau of Elections did send us a lot of PPE. And actually we just got our delivery for the November election. We just received it all yesterday. So we're, we're going to be well, well prepared. Awesome, we had no complaints awesome. from people regarding wearing a mask or not wearing a mask. Everybody was very polite and followed the rules. And that's a big part of it is, is to be polite and, and follow the rules. So we really want this to go off without a hitch. A couple of other things. Uh, Jocelyn uh, is consistent about looking at national models and best practices. Uh, so the, the concept of a ballot box, are you guys using that, uh, Clerk Hauser, there in Battle Creek? Do you have a need like a lot of other communities? Well, we were able um, to get a ballot drop box um, yes. just before the August election. Um, we weren't sure if we were going to get the one from the state or not, so we did order one from a vendor, and it was installed before the before the August election, and um, it's right outside our sidewalk, right outside of City Hall. Excellent. We are using the one from the Bureau of Elections right outside of our office door, so Excellent. that people can drop it there. 
So, uh, and and thank you for sharing that with us because that's especially significant. There, there, there's a huge political discussion about uh, the post office and mailboxes and and if or not the mail process is going to work. And in a lot of ways, that uh, that ballot drop box sort of takes the uh, post office out of the equation. We're encouraging people to take advantage of those ballot drop boxes. Uh, places like Utah, Colorado, Oregon, they've used drop boxes forever. And uh, so we, we're encouraged. Detroit has 30 drop boxes. Uh, I was on the call earlier with Flint. They have six drop boxes. I was on another call with Pontiac. They have seven drop boxes. Uh, Warren, Michigan has at least three, and they're trying to get another three in place. So those drop boxes matter uh, uh, because it is a viable alternative. And most of those drop boxes are lighted. Uh, they have camera security, and, 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 and they're uh, cleaned out regularly throughout the day. So uh, with ballot drop boxes, voting by mail, and uh, a lot of communities are taking advantage of this ballot tracking technology. Uh, in fact, uh, on the day you actually, uh, on the day we actually send you your absentee ballot, if you've signed up for ballot tracking, are you guys aware of that one, Clerk Hauser? Is that something you guys are using? We are aware of it. We chose not to participate with that. We instead have advised everybody to use the mi.gov slash vote website that tells them everything they need to know as far as their ballot. That is awesome. And guess whose website that is? mi.michigan.gov forward slash vote. And, and let me tell you again, uh, because of Jocelyn Benson and the way she, that she thinks, we par we partnered with the I, I know you guys are, once you hear Bilal and Irina, you're going to think we probably are some of the smartest people ever, but we're just regular everyday people. But we uh, we have looked across the country at best practices, and that's where a lot of those concepts uh, uh, come from. So what we sort of learned is uh, through our partnership with the National Center for Civic Design, we learned how to make our website about as user-friendly as is humanly possible. And we really wanted that to uh, support local clerks uh, because every community doesn't operate the exact same way. But if if your voters go to michigan.gov forward slash vote, there hopefully there are just a ton of resources. You type your name in and you put your driver's license number, uh, maybe the last four digits of your social security. It not only will it tell you exactly the location of your polling place, it, it, uh, we're, we're beginning today to upload the closest ballot box to your home address. Uh, uh, and through ballot tracking, on the day you are mailed your absentee ballot, we send you a text message notification. On the day we receive your ballot, we send you another text message notification. On the day we actually process your absentee ballot, we send you a notification to say your ballot is being processed. And all of that is designed uh, to restore the integrity and to encourage people to believe in the process. Uh, I am happy to announce that I actually got my absentee ballot yesterday here in Detroit. And I can't, I'm gonna wait for my wife and uh, my son to get theirs because uh, what I've noticed about my wife, if, if she and I don't have an exact honest conversation we wind up voting against each other. I said, I didn't know you were voting for that person. And so we've got to come to some agreement. So I'm not gonna vote yet until everybody has their absentee ballot so we can agree uh, uh, to, to maximize our vote. So a lot of things are going on. Uh, you, when you go to our website, you will find information about several other initiatives. Uh, we've recruited some 20,000 poll workers from all around the state. I think you guys know, and, Vic, and, and, and uh, Victoria Hauser, Madam Clerk, uh, 16 and 17 year olds. Have you had people that young make application to become? Oh, yes. mm -hmm. yeah. So for everybody on this call, if you've got a 16 or 17 year old, we want you to encourage them to consider becoming election workers. That is huge. That is early exposure. And I promise you, if we can get them at that age, uh, they will be in the game for a very, very long time. So uh, when you get to our website, look for Michigan, uh, uh, Look for a democracy MVP. MVP stands for uh, most valuable player. I told you we've recruited 20,000. We've already sent several thousand into places like Detroit and several hundred into places like Flint. We sent them into Warren. We sent them into St. Clair Shores. We've sent them into, into a bunch of very, very, very small communities that I, 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 
I love Michigan. I've been here all my life, but there's a few communities I just uh, have never heard of. Uh, so I, I commit to continue to expand my horizon. I want to get all around the, the, the state. But if you have a need for poll workers, please, please, please let us know. And because of COVID-19, uh, as an example, there were several clerks who reported on August 4, election day, uh, that uh, several poll workers just did not show up for whatever reason. They, they were not comfortable in that process. Clerk Hauser, was that an issue at all in Battle Creek? Did everybody show up or did, do you think you have a need? Everybody showed up. Those who were previously scheduled who did not um, did inform us well in advance whether they had an operation or if they were recovering or if they were ill. So everybody awesome. we knew were coming did come. Awesome, awesome. Uh, a couple of other initiatives I want to share with you then. Uh, Clerk Hauser, Lynn Ward, Gray, you guys can go for it however you want. You call upon people who might have questions uh, and I'm, I'll have Bilal follow me to talk about language assistance. Uh, but we also, so upon arrival in January of 2019, after we, after Michigan voters overwhelmingly passed these new voting rights, uh, Jocelyn and, and I and, and uh, uh, Irina Bilal came a few months later, but we looked around and said, how can we use our uh, power? How can we make things better? What can, what issues and what initiatives can we take on? So some of what you're hearing, some of what you're seeing as it relates to voting is a reflection of that passion to just help get it right. Um, one of the things we did uh, in Detroit, for example, some 79,000 Detroiters lost their driver's license because of uh, the driver responsibility fee. So we've got an initiative in motion uh, to help those people get their driver's licenses restored. I think you probably know that eight to 9,000 uh, Michigan citizens uh, come home from Michigan prisons every year. And uh, for the first time in the history of this state, uh, effective immediately, every returning citizen will have either a driver's license or state ID and a voter registration card. And it's important that we, uh, we talk to communities, uh, particularly black and brown communities, people who have been uh, disparately impacted by the criminalization experience, we need to remind them that their right to vote in Michigan is automatically restored. Everywhere we go, particularly communities that have low performing precincts, uh, black folk and brown folk in particular, uh, or, or just those low performing precincts, every, they don't always know that their right to vote has been restored. So you, you, you almost need to talk about it in every conversation so that those folk know that they too have power. And we like to remind people that you really don't have power if you don't use it. You can't really complain if you don't get in the game. Uh, and so you've got to push people. Uh, that same thing is true about census participation. Uh, uh, Clerk Hauser or, or Lynn Ward Gray, how are you guys doing there in Battle Creek? What, what, what's your census participation look like? I'm not sure yeah. what the participation is right now. Um, before COVID-19, we did have a committee that um, worked with several of our local partners yes. to increase participation in the census, but then yes. um, everything kind of slowed down and stopped because of COVID. So that committee has not met since the beginning of March. You've got it. Yep. Same thing is true all across the state, uh, but we've still got a few days left. So uh, let's not leave any stone unturned. I think there's a big debate as to if or not the, uh, uh, the census is going to be extended. There's a big court ruling. I don't know the status of it, uh, but there's a decision that many of us are anticipating by the end of today as to if or not we get to go through the end of October. Uh, so I don't know exactly what that particular status is, but uh, very often that same person who might be skeptical about participating in the, in the census is that same person who probably is not gonna vote unless you nudge him. Believe it or not, I've got sisters and brothers. As long as I've been advocating, I worked in the political process for a lot of years. I was a lobbyist for the phone company, a lobbyist for Detroit Public Schools. I was executive director for the NAACP here in Detroit for a lot of years, and I've cared deeply about voting. And one of my sisters, she says, Hess, you know, I don't always get to the poll uh, because I have other things going on. And I'm glad she told me that because now I go get her every election day uh, and make sure she gets to the poll. And I am saying all of us know somebody and many of us are related to people who you think might be participating, but we have to go above and beyond. Lynn Ward Gray, were you gonna jump in there? Well, I just wanted to say uh, Battle Creek and all over the state, uh, there are enumerators that are um, knocking on doors right now and uh, helping uh, with a big push to get the census 
uh, up in our area. So uh, they are clearly identified. Uh, make yes. sure that uh, you uh, speak with them and complete your census is a quick process, less than 10 questions and uh, you're done in, in less than five minutes. So uh, it's really important to our community for that census to be accurate. It's very important. And what we say in Southeast Michigan is 10 questions, 10 minutes, uh, $18,000 per year per person. And you can go to my2020census.gov uh, to, to make sure that you are in fact participating. The last question I'll ask, and then we'll start answering. I'm gonna introduce Bilal and then we can start answering questions. Uh, early processing of ballots, uh, Clerk Hauser, uh, we did get some relief in the legislature. Uh, how significant is early processing of ballots there in Battle Creek? It will help us quite a bit um, with one high speed um, AV County Board equipment. Okay. Um, for the August election with over 5,000 ballots, we were still running ballots through at about 1.30. And mm -hmm. then it took a couple hours to finish all the paperwork for each of those. So yes. early processing will be a huge benefit to our department. And, and that's not early counting for all of you who may be listening. It's really uh, the ability to separate the ballot from the envelope and get it into the ready position to go into that tabulator. That's that's huge. Uh, that's huge for Detroit. I know Detroit, uh, they mailed out 40,000 absentee ballots so far as of yesterday. And I talked with the director of elections this morning. He says uh, between now and Sunday, they would have mailed out 70,000 absentee ballots and between now and September 30, uh, they're going to mail out at least 110,000 absentee ballots. So the ability to process those ballots are especially significant. And a lot of the clerks that I talk to, they don't talk about results on election day anymore. In fact, they don't even use the word <laughs> election day. They only talk about election week or election right. season. Uh, because until we can count the ballots and get all of those numbers right, we're not releasing any results. We're going to take our time and do this thing very, very methodically because we have to get it right. And I think everybody knows that Michigan is right in the middle of, uh, of uh, the target. Everybody's paying attention to what happens here in Michigan. So we wanna go above and beyond to make sure we get it right. And speaking of getting it right, Bilal Hamoud, uh, Mr. Language Assistance uh, uh, Specialist Expert, uh, tell us what you do and why and turn your microphone on. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'll briefly introduce myself. My name is Bilal Hamoud. I'm the Public Engagement Associate with the Department of State. Uh, as Hester said, I came on a couple months after the new administration came in, and that was a part of uh, the effort of the Secretary to develop the Public Engagement Department, a new department that hadn't existed prior in, uh, in prior administrations. And the whole goal of this department is to be proactive take a proactive approach to educating and engaging communities. And that's not just communities that already vote. This is especially prevalent in marginalized communities. Hester mentioned the returning citizens. We also work with uh, the homeless community, with limited English proficiency communities, and with uh, foster youth and uh, students. Because we know that these are communities that are never targeted uh, with voter information. These are groups that are traditionally ignored. And we wanted to make sure that we were being proactive and engaging them and so a lot of our efforts that Hester has mentioned and that uh, I'm gonna talk about here are all within that uh, goal. So uh, we talk about language access. Uh, clerk or uh, anyone who may wanna chime in, what secondary and tertiary languages would you say are spoken in Battle Creek? Clerk wow. Hauser? Have, there she goes. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> In Battle Creek, we have um, a large Hispanic mm -hmm. um, grouping, and then we also have a lot of Burmese. Yep. So I was going to say, I know Burmese is prevalent in Battle Creek because our partner who works with the uh, Burmese community uh, with our language access task force is from Battle Creek. Okay. And so uh, one of our efforts with the language access task force is to take all the voter material you could want, how to register, where to register, how to vote from home, that entire process create graphics, videos, and content for distribution, and not just from our end, but with those partners that are in the communities, the trusted messengers of those communities. And that's a word you're gonna hear a lot today, trusted messenger, because that is what you've become. By attending this session, 
you have become a trusted messenger of your community. You have the information. You know the website, michigan.gov slash vote. This golden holy grail of how to register, registering, checking your polling locations, tracking your ballot, finding your clerk's office, and so much more. If there's one thing that you need to take away from today, it's that you are a trusted messenger to share that information because it's not enough that just you know. You have to share it with your brothers and sisters. As Hester said, I've got three younger sisters and I can tell you, unless I force them, they're not gonna go out and take advantage of their democratic right. So a goal of that language access task force is to really find those traditional and the non-traditional means to engage with those communities. So I'm really excited to be able to talk about it. And I really hope we can connect afterwards offline and I can share those resources with you. Um, one, one other thing, thank you. Uh, one other thing that I do wanna mention is in an effort for poll worker recruitment, uh, we did launch the Greek battle yesterday, which is our way, yes, I know Lynn, we want to engage with the Greek community because they are always on the forefront of civic engagement. We know that they have a hand in civic engagement for generations. Mm -hmm. So we wanna make sure that they're able to take on that extra step as well of engaging in poll worker recruitment and becoming poll workers themselves. So this battle is basically a way to uh, put the competitive edge on the Greeks uh, from across the state. And the winners get recognized on our website. We put out a bunch of uh, you know celebrations and uh, it's, it's accessible to everyone. It's not just uh, Greek members, but they can recruit their family members. They can recruit 16 and 17 year olds because as Hester said, 16 and 17 year olds, they can't vote but they can sign up to be poll workers and get paid. That's the one thing that people don't always talk about. You can get paid. And Hester, correct me if I'm wrong, but in Detroit, if you sign up, you can get upwards of 200 to five, $600 to work as it's a poll actually, worker. Actually, 250 is the lowest and 750 is the high end. Uh, and plus, uh, Clerk Hauser, are you guys making hazard pay available also? We would like to, yes. That's something we are discussing. You've got it, okay. And I'd like to tell you more, uh, maybe offline, I'll send you an email. Uh, I do know that uh, there are some resources and you still have time before October 1 to tap into them, but you may not need them. I know how big and bad you guys are out there in Valley. Uh, but I do want to send you an email so you can take advantage, at least be aware of it. Uh, go ahead, Bilal. Thanks, Esther. So I uh, definitely want uh, the Greeks to be able to take advantage of this opportunity. So Lynn, I'll follow up with you afterwards and Hopefully we can uh, get your Greek organization signed up and participating in the battle. Oh, absolutely. I think we have like four of them on the call right now. So okay. yeah, we're ready. Are they? Oh. Come on, bring it, bring it everybody <laughs> else. A little healthy competition for a good cause. Let's vote. I love it. So, so I know so, we've talked a lot. Um, uh, go ahead, Bilal, will you finish? I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just gonna wrap up and say, those are a couple of the initiatives we're working on. and. I'm really excited to be able to share those resources with you. So thank you for joining this call and thank you for allowing me to speak here. I'm excited to answer some questions. That's right. So any questions, uh, Lynn Ward Gray or Clerk Hauser, anything you guys want us to drill down on? No sacred questions. We're not afraid of you. Well, I, I wanted to um, turn it over to, um, and I see she has uh, gone off video, but I think she can hear us. She's back. Um, Aileen, Bowles Dukes. She is our uh, social action chair, and I wanted to make sure that she got a question in or two. And then those young people that we were talking about, Emira Austin, I see her on the call, and I want to make sure that she gets a chance to ask a question about engaging our um, community in voting this year. Okay. So Aileen Bowles Dukes. That sounds uh, eclectic or aristocratic, those uh, three names. Turn your microphone on. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it can. I'm sure it can be. Um, I, I want to make sure that we are actually tapping into the age group that isn't a part of the choir, which is the 18 to 30 year old group that we actually because we got to like Yeah, 
we're getting a reverberation. And are, are you guys having an issue hearing? Yes, we are. Um, I think you're gonna have to type your message into the chat box, um, Aylin, because we can't hear your um, audio. Okay. Yep, try it one more time. Make a test statement. Okay, or we'll come back to you uh, and give you another shot at it. You said uh, Emirio? Emira, Emira Austin, yes. I'm sorry I'm having some video issues, but my name's Emira Austin. I'm a Battle Creek native, and I'm on the campaign for Lynn Ward Gray as mayor. All in with Lynn over here. Um, and so it's just really important to have the right information out. I know we've had some precinct changes, things like that. Um, so one of my questions is, I know you we have same-day voter uh, registration and voting. So if you're dropping your ballot off, um, I know the polls are open till eight, but if you're dropping that ballot off to your city clerk's office or to city hall or any drop box, what time should you have that in on the day of the election? Is that also eight o'clock or should it be before then? Preference is that you bring it before then, but at eight o'clock we do um, check all of our drop boxes to make sure that there aren't any ballots that need to be counted. If there are ballots that need to be counted, we um, receive them in the qualified voter file and then we immediately take them up to the AV counting board so that they will be counted before we close the polls. Okay, so eight o'clock would be the cutoff to clarify. Yes. Okay, and then um, just one more question really quickly. I know that transportation can sometimes be a barrier for people getting to the polls. Is there anything specific that the city of Battle Creek is doing to help um, voters get to the poll or do they suggest, um, you know, public transit? Um, I lift drive on the side, so I'll be taking that day off work to drive voters to the polls, but is there anything else our city is doing to kind of um, eliminate that barrier of transportation? There were some conversations about possibly providing free transit. I'm not sure where those conversations are at this time, but they had been brought up at a previous commission meeting. Hey, okay. hey Lynn, Lynn, this is Ted Deering. Um, I'm the assistant city manager with the city of Battle Creek. I might be able to help you out with that particular question. Uh, yes, so we are organizing, we are anticipating providing free transportation on all public transportation on election day for both our fixed route service and our van service. And we'll probably, take the fixed route buses off the road at six o'clock or 6.15 when they normally do, but we'll have vans available to take people to and from the polls. That is so, awesome. I wanted to give a shout out to another partner, A. Philip Randolph here in, in the city of Battle Creek. Um, they also will be providing rides to the polls uh, for free for, uh, for voters. So uh, both of those are great options, the city as well as A. Philip Randolph and the work that they do. And, and, and that's a big deal. And thank you for sharing that, Lynn Ward Gray and, and Ted Deering, Mr. City Manager. Thank you for uh, speaking up. How many other big shots do we have on this call, Lynn uh, or, or uh, Clerk? I knew. Uh, yeah. I don't, who else ahead, do we have? Go ahead, go ahead, Big. We also have um, Jessica Vanderkolk, who is our communications manager, who gets information out to our community numerous ways. She's up almost every single night sending out media releases. Awesome. And then we also have um, Sarah Van Warmer, our IT manager, who helps us with everything that's tech related and including every one of the meetings and sessions that we have. That's a big deal. Well, yeah. welcome I everybody. I want to also give a, a shout out and acknowledge the uh, county clerk, who's Kimberly um, Hinkley. She's also. I, I knew she was a big shout. I just didn't have her title on my run of show. Uh, Madam County Clerk, talk about the county. What's going on? What are your numbers? What does your landscape look like? Uh, well, we have been uh, uh, testing programming for the ballots for the last three days, a lot of long hours to get every local clerk their um, programming that they need to test their ballots so that they could get their ballots out on time within that 40 days. Um, we're happy to say that we did accomplish that. And I believe all of our clerks have accomplished getting their ballots out on time too, which awesome. has been a huge feat. Uh, as, as Vicki stated, um, just the city of Battle Creek and the amount of ballots they've already sent out um, and then all the, the um, locals. So we're looking forward to getting those numbers that we have right now of what's being sent out. And it's wonderful to see the voter participation in Calhoun County because you have that right, get out and exercise that right. It's very important. 
I couldn't wait till I turned 18 and was able to vote in that first election. It was very exciting. I, it was it was to me better than going to Disneyland. It was just very exciting to be a part of a huge participation throughout the whole United States to cast votes for those who are going to matter from the from the village, city, uh, townships counties and on up. It's very important because those people play an intricate part in your lives, your daily working and how you live and, and what is taken care of in your cities and townships. So it's very important, even if maybe um, some people may be dismayed at the at the top of the ticket, it's very important to get out and vote at least at the bottom of those tickets. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way because they're very important to flip that ballot over and make sure you get both sides of those ballots voted. So um, we're very excited about um, all the phone calls and emails that we're getting already at the county and, and getting them disseminated to the local clerks where they need to get their apps, applications and get awesome. their ballots from. The excitement is growing and we're very excited about you all being a part of this today and um, informing uh, the residents of Battle Creek and Calhoun mm -hmm. County. That's awesome. Tell me this, uh, 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 County Clerk Hinkley, how many uh, clerks do you have there in Calhoun County? We have 19 townships and uh, four uh, cities. Yes. And uh, so, yes, they are all very, very busy. Yeah, that's a big deal. Um, uh, like you, I think I've participated in the voting process since I was about age 16. I've always been on somebody's campaign. I can't wait until election season because I'm voting and if I like you, I'm voting for you. Uh, and if I don't like you, I can't wait to vote against you. Exactly. Uh, and exactly. That's, just a, that's just a one day. Uh, uh, you, uh, that's the great equalizer. Irina, were you going to add? Irina, I thought I saw your hand. No, I was applauding uh, Clerk Hinckley's comment about voting uh, for, you know, not just the top, but all of the all of the offices, okay. local. Excellent. Voting is local. <laughs> and and uh, Lynn, I think I see A. Lynn Bowles Duke's question in the chat. It says, reaching 18 to 30 year olds, quick tidbits of info is needed. How are we getting it out to this group? Uh, I've got a few ideas, but let me start with you, Lynn Ward Gray and, and Clerk Hauser and Clerk Hinckley. How, what, what's your... What's the magic uh, salve uh, to, to touch young people? Any, any tidbits? Yeah, so um, I think we're engaging uh, as we do the work uh, in AACP, uh, A. Philip Randolph, we're trying to show up where they are. <laughs> so that, yeah, that's yeah. Where, kind of where you start. And uh, we, I know A. Philip Randolph was just on KCC's um, campus yesterday uh, doing the, um, excuse me, Tuesday doing the voter yeah. registration um, day and I mean uh, National Voter Registration Day you and, got it. and that's what we have to do we we have to go where they are they're not going to come to us we've got to get the information to them and uh, make sure that they know how easy it is to engage in the process in the state mm -hmm. of Michigan and um, it was it was a pleasure so uh, I think we'll just keep doing more events like that I know uh a. Philip Randolph, NACP, Urban League here locally are engaging every weekend leading up to election in some way, shape, or form to engage young people and all citizens. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Clerk Hauser? We've also talked to a representative at the college at KCC, and then some of the local schools have also referred a lot of students to us. Awesome. It matters. It all adds up. Clerk Hinckley, any additional? Uh, social media, it, kids are yeah. online. We, we need to get the word out through social media to make sure that they are seeing that, that that's the forefront. I know anytime that I'm on social media, it's popping right up there. Have you registered to vote? Do you, have you got, you know, have you uh, sent your application in for your ballot? It's, it's on there and that needs to continue to, the more they see it, the more they're going to say, okay, this is the fourth time I've seen this. I'm going to register to vote. That's right. And they need to keep seeing that on social media. They're there all the time. And I think you've said several things that are especially significant. Uh, young people communicate uh, a little differently than those of us who, and I know I don't look it, but I'm over 50. Uh, I, I know you barely, I know you don't believe that. But uh, uh, young people do use social media. You, and, and I think, Lynn, you said it, you've got to go where they are. Uh, and that also means you've got you to listen as much as you lecture to young people. You've got to really hear their issues. Uh, they don't always relate to things we used to hear. People fought and died for the right to vote. Yes, but what they really care about is college affordability. They care about access to opportunities. They care about how do they address student debt. You've got to talk to them about issues that matter to them. 
And we said earlier, same day voter registration, that's a huge new benefit, particularly to young people. So, the, uh, and, and there is a relationship between the number of times you touch a voter and the likelihood they participate. So it doesn't matter how many times you say it, just keep saying it until you're exhausted beyond 8 p.m. on election day. And Clerk Hauser, I think it is important that we remind people uh, in, in response to Amira's uh, question, don't wait until 8 p.m. on election day. Uh, get that ballot in early. You can start voting today. You can, you can start today. We got 40 days of early voting going on uh, and, and under no circumstance do you trust the mailbox if you get within two weeks of election day. Take that ballot directly to the drop box. That's what we're telling people everywhere we go because you don't want any delays. I think you guys know that we did get a, a, a ruling from a judge that says uh, ballots can be and will be counted after election day. That's huge. That is huge. I think you probably know that some 10,694 uh, ballots were not counted uh, across the state of Michigan on August 4. And a lot of those ballots uh, were received after uh, the August 4 deadline and we didn't have the law interpretation that we have now. Do you know that um, if a person dies between the time they mail their ballot and the day that we count, uh, those ballots are not counted. We had several hundred people like that. Those ballots were not counted. And then another piece of legislation we're looking for that could provide relief. I don't know how you guys address, uh, we call it uh, signature curing. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes the signature doesn't match. And, and you know, uh, as we get older, sometimes we just get fancier. We don't write our entire name. We just scribble something. And if it really doesn't match, technically, uh, Clerk uh, uh, Hauser or, or Clerk Hinkley, do you guys uh, ever, uh, how do you address that? We call, if we have the voter's phone number, we will call yes. the voter. If we don't have a phone number, if we have an email, we send a notification awesome. to them. Um, awesome. As a very last resort, we will either mail the um, the, ballot, the whole ballot envelope back to them again, yes. highlighted with a note asking them to sign there. If they call us, if we call them and they're not able to come to the office, we are willing to go to their homes to have them sign it. Look at you. Look at you, servant leader. Good for you. That's I awesome. told you she was the best. I, I've heard good you. things about her. Uh, but I think it's important that we have these types of forums because people need to be reminded uh, of, of what type of services are available through your clerk's office and, and things that we can take advantage of. And every effort matters. So uh, we, we, will, we, we cannot get discouraged. Um, and I, I particularly, Ted Deering, I, 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 I'm particularly pleased to hear you say you're going to make transportation available. That's a big deal, sir. Uh, that is a big deal, particularly in, in urban centers, uh, you know, where everybody doesn't have a car. So that's a big deal. Uh, any more questions? And Irina, how are we doing on time? Are we going too long or are you, we don't want them? I think to we speak. might have time for maybe one more question. And we, okay. are, we are going over, so if that's okay with folks, we can uh, take I'm okay for maybe one or two okay. more questions. All right. I, I think I see Deborah Sali from uh, A. Philip Randolph, perhaps, on the line. And I do want her to at least get the phone number out uh, in case people want to call and, um, you know, uh, get rides uh, um, or the work that they're doing if they want to engage and volunteer. Um, if she can get that information out real quickly, that would be helpful. So, Deborah. Okay. okay. Hi. Yes. Hello, everybody. Yes, uh, we are. And thank you, Lynn, for uh, putting us out there a little while ago. I've been trying to get out over the computer, but it wasn't working. <laughs> but anyhow, um, just so you know, let me do this first, though. The telephone number to get, I want to make sure I give you my right number. One number is going to be our office number, and that's 269-788-3566. The other number is going to be my contact cell number, and that's going to be 269-267-2925. And, and Deborah, do us a favor, and if you don't mind, type those numbers in our chat so everybody has it. Will you do oh, that? Okay, I'll try to do it from my phone, but I've never oh, tried that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, sometimes it's a little I'll, different. I'll, I'll, I'll try and see if we, I can make it work. But I do want to let everybody know we too are also phone banking. We are 
that we had voter registration yesterday. We participated in National Voter Registration Day on the 22nd. We were at the college. We were at Save a Lot, and we were down at the Sojourner Truth Monument. Awesome. So we're trying to get out there and get things done. We will be giving rise to the polls, like Lynn said. We will also, if somebody has a form and they cannot get it to the clerk's office or they can't get it to the box, I have drivers and I'm looking for more drivers that are willing to go pick it up for them and take it there, wherever they want it to go, we plan on getting it there. You got it. Okay. That's awesome, good, awesome, good. So let's go into wrap up. Let me just repeat a couple of things. I saw a, a, another question in the chat that asked about mailing your, mailing your ballot. What date should you mail it by? I, I, I said, it, if, if you have not mailed it two weeks prior to election day, take it to the clerk. I just don't want you to get stuck in the mail, even though we did get a little relief, uh, but take it to the clerk so you'll feel better about it. And let me say this very honestly, uh, black people in particular, y'all like to go to the poll. Y'all like to put your ballot directly into the machine because you just don't trust that the process is going to work. Uh, and that that's based on history and all of that. But we're asking you to be particularly uh, uh, sensitive to this COVID-19 reality and, and take advantage of vote by mail and, and get that ballot in as early as possible. I think uh, uh, the, your clerk will be encouraged when she sees people participating very, very early. A couple of other things, and I'm a, I'll, I'll have a, a couple more last words, but I did want to uh, just highlight uh, the fact that there is energy in the street all across America. Uh, COVID-19 has all of us on heightened alert, heightened awareness, and a, a lot of good things. Uh, there ain't a bunch of good things about COVID-19, but there are a few things that are good that have come out of this particular crisis. And I think like you, uh, uh, most of us agree that there's always some kind of opportunity in a crisis. And I know you can't see the all of me, but we started a little walking club. So it's a bunch, it's eight of us that walk every morning at 6.30, we do four miles. So uh, if, if you can feel my energy, but that's COVID-19 pushed us into that new reality is what I'm saying to you. Uh, but George Floyd, uh, police issues, race and road policing, all of those issues have people in the street. That's energy, y'all. That's energy. And those of us who work and live and commit to the leadership level, we've got to harness that energy and help people move from protest to power, from agony to action. And voting is an extension of that power. So you, you know, shame on us if we don't capture that energy and help these young people know that voting does matter. Who you elect determines who gets selected as police chief or, and who you elect determines who gets uh, the, the prosecutor's job. And, and, and we've got some issues, uh, all 50 states, 60 plus countries across the world, whether we're connected to it, whether we agree with it, it's happening. And it's happening in a way that none of us have lived long enough to anticipate that it would be this large. And I, I believe in a lot of things, but there's one concept called Kairos, K-Y-R-O-S. Uh, this is a Kairos moment. I think Rosa Parks, for example, was a Kairos moment. A lot of people had kept their seat on buses long before Rosa Parks, but why did Rosa Parks keeping her seat change the world? I think Barack Obama was a Kairos moment. A lot of people, a lot of black folk had run for president before Barack Obama. George Floyd was a Kairos moment. Things are changing. Believe it or not, uh, symbols are coming down. Resources are being made available. People are talking very openly about race and equity. We're normalizing discussions that traditionally have been uncomfortable. Uh, so I'm suggesting that we got to be open. We've got to be honest. We can get there, uh, but we need bold leaders. So um, let me stop there. And Len Ward Gray, then Clerk uh, Hauser and Clerk Hinkley, if you guys uh, got some wrap up comments, uh, we can wrap it up. Yeah, I'm going to leave that with uh, both the clerk, city and county. Um, and uh, just thank everybody for uh, participating. And I'm glad this is recorded and can play over and over on uh, the city's website. So if you missed it, uh, you'll, you might be seeing this uh, uh, pre-recorded and, and be able to get this good information. So thanks for joining awesome. us. Can I say something before you close off? Go right I ahead. Did. Okay, hi, this is Deborah again. And I did get those numbers in the chat. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. 
All look right. You. Yeah, look uh, at me. Technologically <laughs> savvy. <laughs> yeah. And I love people who, who, who say something by asking, can they say something? You know, technically, you're already saying it when you just jump in and say it. But <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I appreciate you. Clerk House. Um, I really appreciate being invited to do this. And um, I appreciate that our Calhoun County clerk was able to attend also. I do wanna give a big shout out though to the Calhoun County elections clerk. She has so many different responsibilities supporting all of us clerks, ordering ballots, doing notices to all the testing. She is, she's awesome. She does a lot for every one of us clerks. She's incredible. And we really, really appreciate all the work that she does for us. Is that there, is that her right there, Clerk Hinkley? No, um, our elections clerk is Terry Lowe. She's okay. been with our office for um, about 25 years. And um, that's what her job is, is uh, elections director. And she is phenomenal. And um, uh, when I was appointed, everybody was concerned. You're keeping Terry right. And I said, oh, my stars, I'd be crazy not to. Um, she is uh, a woven part of our fabric here. And uh, we, we really appreciate all of her knowledge and everything she does. Her and I have been together three days um, this week uh, to very, very late hours. I'm um, getting everything done. And I just appreciate her um, on point, very, um, shoot, what's the word? She's very dedicated to her job and she That's makes awesome. everything work so well. And we just really appreciate her. And I appreciate each one of the local clerks as well and all the job that they are doing. It's election season exactly is the terminology now. Election season is, is very important. It's very long. It can be very tiresome, but our clerks yes. in Calhoun County are doing a wonderful job. And I know all the clerks throughout Michigan are dedicated to making safe and secure elections that everything can be recountable if needed to be and that their job they take very seriously. And I really appreciate each one of them. And I thank you um, for having us this evening. I, I appreciate you all letting me be a part of this conversation and all the um, wonderful energy that we are using here in Cowan County and throughout the state of Michigan. Don't forget to vote. You are so awesome there, Calhoun <laughs> County, Battle Creek. Thank you guys so very much. Uh, uh, Can I so, ask a question? Um, yep, go right ahead. Uh, Deborah, you put in a number um, 261, and I thought you said it was 267. So I just want yes, to Yes, sure. it is 261. I looked okay. at it wrong when I was reading it on the paper. Okay. But when I, I found the sure phone. The, the audience knew the right number. Okay. So thank you. Yes, thank you. All right. And then, uh, 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 Irina, are we okay? I think you just posted uh, if you want to contact our office. Uh, secretary at Michigan.gov, if you have any additional questions. Um, I put my email in there, but it's it's easy just to say secretary at Michigan.gov. Secretary at Michigan.gov. <laughs> and we've got a great team that are answering your questions. Any concerns about election security? We actually have an election security hotline, uh, and we are going to be particularly vigilant. Uh, so in addition to thank you, I'll just remind you, I, I, I do believe that the very best way to predict the future is to create it. Young people are the secret sauce. We've got to include young people in everything that we do. I don't believe that where we live should determine if we live or die or have access to opportunity. And, and voting really does matter. So there is an old African proverb that says when all has been said that needs to be said, it is okay to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> Can we adjourn this meeting? Yes. Thank you so very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, Battle Creek. And thank, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye, bye, bye now. very much. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.